women matters and we are the third time in this year that we meet and it's still january 2024 as always check in and we might talk about essence and enneagram and we will see where we where we start and where we end who wants to start with the check in i say monia huh? Okay. Um, yeah, uh, I have been looking forward, first of all, to speak English again. It's like a couple of German Zooms, Zoom meetings. And um, I'm very much looking forward to the topic because I guess it's quite important that you know about your essence and how you have to approach it. Otherwise, the weather is sunny, but chilly still in Vienna. And yeah, it's just the usual up this afternoon. I pass on to Hanni Lee. Thank you, Monja. I'm Hanni Lee. I'm Cape Town, South Africa. And your essence is really close to my heart. <laughs> um, anything that relates to that. And I just watched two amazing videos of a polymath, Dr. Leonard Schlein. And yeah, it's about um, how he believes that art, that a language has um, caused the rising of the patriarchal system and why the goddess was, was removed from life, so to speak. And or the spirit of the time, zeitgeist. Um, it is really just wonderful because what his one book is about art, gender, and science. And he believes that art um, actually is the predecessor of what will be discovered in science. And he passed quite a while back already. He's no longer with us. But it was just so amazing to, to be present to what he was sharing about all of this and his own his own. Um, research because he's putting together different fields as a polymath and yeah it's just it's just fascinating so i'm still in that energy so yeah with you and i'm passing on to christine king hello um i live in uh, north carolina on a small farm western north carolina not too far from Asheville, and my is psychology, but my focus is the Enneagram. And I am in the midst of creating a new model that helps us move from personality to make choices that allow us to move towards essence. So it's something that intrigues me a lot. And we'll be doing something about that today, playing with it, exploring it together. I look forward to that very much. It might take the whole time and it might even move on to then it just will we'll see how it goes if we carry forward with it or if we take a deep dive today that's satisfying we'll see i've spoken monia no monia's gone um christine west okay i'm christine habib and i am in carlsbad california which is just up the road from san diego and I've been preoccupied lately with thoughts about weddings and my daughter's engagement. And uh, we went to a bridal bazaar yesterday, which is where all the vendors, a lot of vendors, uh, bridal vendors set up and um, you walk through and get information. So we did that for a few hours yesterday with her fiance. He, he wanted to join. So that was kind of fun. I don't think I did anything particularly helpful, but uh, I think my daughter was glad to have the support. And we're going to look at some wedding venues this weekend. So kind of getting into, I think there's going to be busy periods of helping with that. And then probably since she won't get married for about a year, probably quite a few slow periods. Um, I am making adjustments to my schedule because I've got a little bit more free time and I'm starting to do yoga. Uh, 
I'm very bad at it, but I am determined <laughs> to become more flexible. I would, that's my goal is improve my posture, improve my flexibility, um, and just kind of stick with it. I'm, I'm bad at yoga. I don't know if I've already, I may have already mentioned to this to the group and I apologize if I have, but, uh, I don't like my head in going downward dog and back up and sideways and this way and that way and turning it constantly. Um, it makes me nauseous. I get kind of motion sickness from having my head twirling around in space. So I just go slowly. I have found that if I don't try to necessarily keep up with everything and just go at my own pace that uh, I can avert the nausea a little bit. So that's, that's good. It'll help me continue with yoga. Um, and it's, um, we'll see what happens with the yoga class in essence, <laughs> because obviously there's a, a lot of emphasis on breathing and turning inward and paying attention and, and just being present. So, um, I think that'll be That'll be a, an added plus to going to the classes besides the physical benefits. And I will uh, give over to Heidi. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so, I, just, I just would like to ask you, have you ever tried Tai Chi? Yes, just once. But I know it has a lot to do with balance and slow movement, right? Yeah. Tell me, Tell me what you know, Monia. Well, I've tried both, and I would rather suggest Tai Chi to you, particularly if you get dizzy with, with yoga, which I've never was. But you can't be, it's less uh, competitive. You really, Tai Chi is just easygoing and get, getting into the moves, and it gets you very well grounded. So I really, uh, Tai Chi helped me a lot in all my spiritual endeavors, and I always was well grounded, which was quite good most of the time yeah mm -hmm. so i would recommend tai chi to you mm -hmm. in case it's possible but uh, i wouldn't i wouldn't do anything that makes me dizzy yeah, yeah. <laughs> has anybody done qigong qigong is that am i saying it right mm -hmm. and you are muted you wanted to say something yeah i was doing a modality that includes tai chi and qigong and all of those so it's a combination um it's a dance actually but you use the movement and the and the postures and the presence of all of them it's included but you do it on music and that for me was also beautiful because it also again you have you can balance your left and right brain hemispheres your left side of your body your right side of your body as well but i i also i've done yoga um for quite a while when i was much younger but I also prefer the more flowing, personally, the more flowing. Um, I don't like to be constricted in a specific pose. <laughs> My body wants to be free. <laughs> Thank you. I'll complete. Yeah, I can add. I'm doing Pilates in a med meditative way. So even if the teacher says, breathe in, breathe out, I do it my way as it comes. And it's very beneficial. Even Mark did it uh, when he was here. Uh, I mean... When we were together, and he liked it, and that's when you want to get more flexible. That's really a good way because you don't. I see. I was in a yoga class of my sister in America, and they do it like sports, like do this, da, 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 da. no. In this Pilates I'm doing is really much more um, observative. Uh, you you observe what what is happening in yourself, and sometimes you stay in a pose, but normally not. Normally you do a movement, and then maybe for eight um, countings uh, you stay at the end in a in a in a certain position. But it's not like yoga where you have to do do. And as you said, no, <laughs> it's more mobile and more at least the the version I'm doing, and more soft and more um, slow so as my sister was doing at yoga that's for me is not yoga this is sports or something you know <laughs> anyway she was a, a is a yoga teacher so as for me i was again for three hours in the olive trees cutting pruning the olive trees today was perfect weather in the morning i had to go 
quite early out of the house. We had zero grads, uh, centigrades. And when I went towards Terni, there was even minus two. And uh, during the day, it's in the sun, it's so hot. I mean, hot, yeah. But you have a, yeah, you have a, um, a, a thin pullover and a jacket because uh, I don't want, you know, when I saw and all these pieces of wood run on, on me. So otherwise I wouldn't even need the jacket. But I don't want to have it on the pullover or these, what is it, segatura, what, is, what do you say, segamel in English, Monica, Monia. You don't know. You know, when you saw with the electric saw and all these pieces of uh, uh, of wood come, and I do it up there, you know, and then psh, everyone is coming over me. Wood but sawdust. I, wood sawdust. 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 Yeah. sawdust. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Not stardust, but sawdust. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and the word I was looking for, when you do yoga, you can easily get ambitious. Yeah. I was. And mm -hmm. I headstand when I was, I don't think, I think I was 48 or something. I finally managed the headstand. And it was the Tai Chi teacher who showed me that uh, being not ambitious is much better for me. <laughs> so, and we had fun because the yoga class was after the Tai Chi class. And the yoga people were always very, very angry because we took, took too much time. And it was so funny. And I thought, well... Uh, yeah, that's what it's yoga is maybe about. Just to, if you are like me, uh, what is it, an Enneagram 8, you want to be headstrong and first and so on. Okay, but uh, that's. Uh, <laughs> you already uh, did the, the, the transmission, the transport to the topic, Enneagram. Yeah, yeah I'm just trying. Christine, uh, yeah, <laughs> thank you. Christine was saying that she wants to do something with us and Enneagram and Essence. So I give over to you. Okay, it's a the, sort of a new version of looking at it, I think. Um, but we have we all have a personality that can sometimes run everything. But what we're going to do today is we're going to look at the highest level. The, student, the person I studied with was Rock Hudson, who has written the book that's this famous book about the Enneagram. And he identifies the healthy, the average, and the less healthy of each one of the types. And before we can really go into essence, we're invited to, there she goes, there she is, where we go to the very highest levels of functioning in our number. So I think I'm just going to read each one of them, and then you can all have it, and then we can start off with whoever wants to go with question, okay? So I'm going to read a brief description of, of the highest level of type one, because I think, Christine West, you mentioned that you were a one, so we're going to go in sequence, okay? So you're going to go to one, then four, then seven, then eight, okay? So it'll be a fair amount of me talking, but I think I can do it quickly. And then everybody can have it in the back of their mind as we look at each one of ours. Does that seem like a way to go? Yeah, what was your type? I've forgotten. Also Three. four? Three. Okay, so we have almost all. <laughs> okay, so I'm not gonna focus on me at the moment. I'm more wanting to focus with all of you to support you that way. So, okay, um, type one. By the way, my version is, that we have all nine in us. We just have one that is our strongest and can be our most holy place when we work with it. But we've got all nine in us. Okay, so the highest level of personality functioning in one is one as ones let go of the belief they are in a position to judge anything objectively and are able to approach life without emotionality, reacting to it. They are also paradoxically um, achieve their very best desire to have in integrity and to be good. As a result of their self-actualization, they become wise, discerning, accepting, hopeful, and even often noble. That's a personality that's thriving. And the essence, this is my book, and what I did was I wrote coins in the book for each 
of the nine and the one essence description I'll read now. I receive guidance that supports my integrity. I receive being fully present in this moment. I receive effortless balance. I receive open-mindedness. I release any need to control myself or others. And there's a Rumi quote that captures it. Beyond the rightness or wrongness of things, there is a field. I'll meet you there, Rumi. So take a deep breath. And I hope I just want to check in with you. Is it okay in order to make sure everyone gets touched by it that I read all four? Or do you want us to check? If we check in with each person, they all might not be able to be able to hear what is available in this session. What do you think? Okay. Well, no words there. I'll get a four then. <laughs> is that okay? Yes, yes. Okay. I have to find my pages because I didn't know what we were going to be doing. Mm -hmm. Okay, four, Heidi, they're in the feeling triad, the highest functioning healthiness for the four in the personality is fours let go of the belief that they are more flawed than others and are thus freed from their self-absorption. Their basic desire is to find themselves and their significance is also achieved and thus their problems with their identity and its stability are just naturally solved. They are self-renewing, redemptive, and revelatory. Okay, the essence description in this book is the force essence. I receive my ever renewing, transforming true nature. I receive magical flow in the present moment. I receive precious, deep contact with myself and others. I receive my soul's creative expressions. I release any need to be unique. I already am. And Rumi, when you lose all sense of self, the bonds of a thousand chains will vanish. Rumi. And now we're going to move on to seven. highest level in seven, the personality. Seven is like go of the belief that they require specific objects and experiences to feel fulfilled. So they are able to fully assimilate their experiences and be nourished by them. They also paradoxically achieve their basic desire to be satisfied and content, to have their needs fulfilled and they become appreciative, ecstatic, and deeply grateful. And the essence in here, just separating the books. I receive joy and bring it to others. I receive ecstasy in everyday moments. I receive wonder, I'm part of the universe. I remember 
my life is a gift. I release distractions that interfere with this precious moment. And Rumi, gratitude is the wine for the soul. Go on, get drunk. Rumi. And now we move on to Monya and her beautiful eight qualities. But you've got it in front of you, don't you? <laughs> so. The highest personality qualities of the eight Aids let go of the belief that they must always be in control of their environment, which allows them to let down their guard and heal their hearts. They also paradoxically achieve their basic desire, the desire to protect themselves and become magnanimous, self-surrendering, courageous, forgiving, and sometimes heroic. And now we go to the eight essence. I receive my refined, unselfish conscious, unselfish consciousness, innocence. I receive my solidarity and self-reliance. I receive what is deeply true. I receive the pulsing wisdom of my native instincts. I release any need to control life. I delight in the mystery and trust divine will. Rumi, our greatest strength lies in the gentleness and tenderness of our A lot of words. I hope some of them landed, but it felt good to include all of them with love and how treasure, what a treasure it is to feel the difference that's ever so slightly between a really healthy personality and allowing us to breathe and feel and come from you. I'm sure there are questions, but maybe it's about experiencing more than having questions. I want to, to do an observation because now hearing this, I hear quite a big difference between all the types. You know, when you said the, the essence, for instance, Hanali with joy and ecstasy and uh, the other letting go of control and so on. It's Yes, sometimes it's it's near from one type to the other, but there are big differences. What I feel what? from my tip type, on for instance, uh, Hanelis type, there I I don't think there was any uh, anything of the same <laughs> between us. And what I think is much about that, and thank you, is that when we go to essence, knowing that we have all nine personality. It, you know, available to us. I think it also means that when we read those words and we have them, um, those are available to us too. There may be the core of each essence has its own shape and words, but I think all of it is available to us. But does it mean that one is more natural available to you and for the other you have to work to, to, to get there? Or how, how does it how do you see that? I'd like to keep it simple by saying it's all about presence. Hmm. And depending on what's happening in your life right now, you might be accessing the essence of the one. If that might be what's needed. Or the essence of the seven, which needs to be expressed. And there's another one in eight when you want to just trust our heart. So they can all become part of a beautiful collage. 
I never remember. said it this way. I always had learned that it, your type is your type and you cannot change it. Uh, you know, you'll change it. My gosh, the more evolved you are, mm -hmm. the more you respect and uh, appreciate and know about, have concept of the different one. Yeah, and it, it gets really complicated because there are lots of lines that take us to other places as well that make it even more acceptable. For example, the four has a lot of acceptability with the one, and the one has a lot with four. So there are certain lines that mean things. Um, I mean that they have certain qualities that they can access more easily. Can I ask a question? Yes. I, and it's simply from my own experience, so it's not based on the Enneagram or in, in the context that you beautifully shared this with us. Thank you for that. But in my own experience, when I sense into essence, it, it's a state of joy within us, naturally. So I understand that the Enneagram gives a framework. In, am I correct in saying that? The, with the different types? But having been with other people who are really embodying and expressing their essence, there is no division. They all feel the same joy when they, when they share about it. You can see you, you see it in them. You sense it in them. So I always have this interesting um, paradoxical dilemma of having things in categories, and then us as a whole being, which encapsulates everything. Like you beautifully said in the beginning, that we have all these types inside of us, and one is dominant, or one comes out and play more. Yet from a feminine perspective, in terms of wholeness, I see it as a sense essence as, as one energy. And everybody experiences that same energy when they are in their essence. Does that make sense? Yeah. There's no small box when we are in our essence. And it expresses itself differently if we're in a small group because we're accessing each other. We're very influenced by the vibration that we may not be conscious of, but it's just showing itself in a group. And and also, I'm just curious, because I don't know so much about the Enneagram, um, from what you just shared about the group essence, am I right in saying that? The group essence, the composite of all the energies, that also has a quality, right? Sure. That we is, may... there a way, is there a way in the Enneagram to actually determine that quality or not? I'm, of the we... group energy. I wouldn't see. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry for that. <laughs> I'm off the charts again. It's <laughs> a great question. I probably wouldn't use the word determine, but they can. We all are connected. And so that connection is going to manifest depending upon each individual. Even right now, we are on a Zoom, but we all of our essences can be influencing each other in this setting. But our brains aren't wired to be able to use words for that. But I think you all use the word presence. Christine West used the word presence, I believe, a few times. So our presence is absorbing. And it's happening right now. We just don't always need to pause and ask ourselves, what words would I use to describe this? It's in our bodies. And body includes brain. <laughs> this thing on the top. <laughs> Here's somebody else sharing her essence. <laughs> Thank you. Sing all the time. <laughs> mm. 
very good yeah. point. Right there. You. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Any other question? Any questions that would help? Because it looks sort of like splash a lot of words. It sort of can easily create opportunity to clarify anything. Well, I was in particular, I noticed that I got into resonance with the word receive. Mm -hmm. That I receive. And yeah, and that's, uh, it took me a long time just to sit back and being able to receive. Uh, because as a child, I was trained to be very ambitious and to to study hard and to achieve something. But now it's it's uh, yeah now it's just uh, as I as I told Heidi before again and again, everything seems to fit as past. So I just have to sit back as past. It 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 fits. So I just sit back and receive. So maybe I am more and more in my essence now. It's a Actually, beautiful thing. When, uh, when Christine talked about you, I mean, read the, the text about you, I saw you, Monia. I thought, oh, yeah, that's what I think that Monia is. So. OK, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe I finally. Yeah, I can live my essence. What a gift that is. Yeah. For all of us. Um, do you notice that sometimes to in order to I'm talking to myself and I suppose all of us, there is such a such a precious state of being to receive. Do you notice sometimes when you that it's having an intention? To receive or an intention for a certain experience and then just see see what comes. Just intentions can sometimes be married nicely mm -hmm. with receiving. If we have an intent, we don't need it. It's just um, it's another way of looking at it. Because I've noticed I've been playing with intention and then seeing what receives. Well, what I notice is that I pay a lot of attention to my intuition, my brain, my, my body brain, not my head brain. And uh, yeah, that probably works fine too. So I follow whatever really turns up and says, don't do this, do this. And uh, yeah, which I haven't been doing a long time because I always felt once I was in control everything would be fine but now it's easier not to be in control and just <clears throat> beautifully put because the aides I worked with can do control very well they're very 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 good at it and, but what's lovely about that is there's that and then I really had you Owning up and trust, trusting what is, which is almost the opposite of controlling. Nice. It was trust. It's so beautiful. And I think as we get older, we have more opportunities for that. Well, it's, uh, I guess, a long way because I was born in 41 during the war with bombs around and no security. But I never felt, I always felt safe, amazingly because my mother and my grandmothers were around and I never, yeah, and that, I guess you get really, this is the time when you are conditioned towards a certain uh, mentality at this age. What a thing to be grateful for, yeah, that you had that. Mm -hmm. What a grateful, what a thing to be grateful for, for to have had that young. Yeah. Yeah. Had a foundation. That's a strong A. You had a foundation that ultimately you could count on. It's quite something to name. Thank you. Very touching. 
to appreciate our gifts. And I think essence can show us that. Any questions? Observation? Well, I'm wondering about the one. If it's more difficult for the one to let go of control, because my husband is a one, and now at 82, he has to let go of a lot of things, and he it's, it's hard for him. Much harder than uh, yeah, I would have expected. Um, and he has always had to be controlled about everything as well. So, um, so maybe it's the difference in the approach to our essence that matters. I think we receive our essence differently. That's a very important thought. Yes. I was going to say, for me, some of the distinction, Monia, is if I'm going to be accepting and wise and non-judgmental and let some of that control go, you know, the, the fear is I'm just resigned. I'm giving up. You mm -hmm. know, I'm, I'm acknowledging things can't be better. Mm -hmm. Things can't be improved upon. You just have to accept them. So that for me as a one, that's the distinction that I have to recognize acceptance um, is not the same as resignation. They're, they're different things, but that's yeah. the fear. Yeah. yeah. And to accept old age, I had such a, a funny uh, quote I pass it around that everybody, you know, I said, yeah, yeah, that's exactly true. That in every old person, there is a young one who said, what the hell happened? <laughs> so, uh, yeah. And either you, you know what happened or you can figure out what happened and it's just natural or you will resist it. And then it gets difficult. It's my opinion. Mm -hmm. Because that's true, there is a young 17-year-old or 16-year-old and and you wonder why, why can't things be like, yeah, why can't I be as fast as I used to be and as bouncy as I used to be and as cheerful. But that's what happens to everyone. Change. Mm -hmm. Even rocks change. It takes them millennia to do it, <laughs> but they're very slow at it, but they do change. There's no staying the same. I was thinking about the old age and the difference. It's very much also due to the fact that we are living in a youth culture and you should stay as you were always. And getting older is not really accepted as a stage of life. No? Then you are, you know, you, you are not useful anymore if you can't do that. So maybe it's a cultural thing that we cannot celebrate um, the different stages of life because it's always like having lost something which we shouldn't have lost. I don't know. I think that that's a, a lovely question. And it probably varies from culture to culture. Yeah. I think the US has an awful lot of um, the water we're swimming in, especially now with social media and everything. Sometimes it's harder to separate ourselves and be deep inside with essence when there's so much stuff that takes us outside. And value sometimes shows up in what we do outside and less about what's we're going on in our inner world, giving that freedom to show itself. Having lived in a number of other cultures in the 
East and the West. It's kind of humbling to watch how that affects us, which is one of the things I love about our group. Mm -hmm. So if anybody wants to go more deeply into it, um, I do recommend that in fact, it's interesting to see that a pretty big book with a lot of details, but we can see the less healthy, the average, and the layers. So there are lots of just layers to look at. And sometimes see, well, I think I just I just came from this level here. And I think it's time for me to jump right back up here because that's this is the doorway to the essence. So I, what I like about that one page for each of the nine is that it kind of gives me a, a cerebral chance to check in and say, where am I now today? Really? I'm a little bit confused. I'm anxious. What's it, what am I anxious about? And sometimes that can help clarify. Why don't you share yours with us as well? You said you're a three. Sure, yeah, I'm a three. Yes. Oh, that would just be lovely because we all had opportunity. Yeah, of course. I just didn't want to be part of the. I didn't want to take away time from you, but of course. Here we go. Okay. The high functioning three. Classes. Threes let go of the belief that their value is dependent on the positive regard of others thus freeing them to discover their true identity and their own heart's desire. The three's basic desire is also achieved and they feel valuable and worthwhile. They become self-accepting, genuine, and benevolent. And then the essence description. I receive my authentic, honest self. I receive humility. I receive my open, innocent, tender heart. I receive my intrinsic value. I release any need to prove my value and my worth. Rumi, you have no need to travel anywhere. Journey within yourself. Enter a mind of rubies and bathe in the thunder of your own light. Just to give you a sense, not that I'm marketing, but the whole book, well, I believe in the visuals of what they, the qualities, the healthy and less qualities. So I think, I think the book that write about the Enneagram make it really very complex. I've had people just identify their home base number by looking at a few photographs. And that was a lot of fun because it just obscures people so much with too many words and they walk away from the Enneagram and that was hurting my heart. I wanted it to be easy. Yeah, but we can't put all those pictures today. <laughs> <laughs> So thank you for wanting to do this because it gives me great pleasure to bring it into our rooms together. And uh, thanks so much for that. Thank you. I still have a question. I'm wondering how you recommend to people to develop from the lowest level of their personality to 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 arrive at these higher levels of healthy personality. Great question. I think it helps to know what all the other qualities are. So to be able to read the descriptions all the way up to the healthy ones, to notice that okay, this is what I need to do. I need to let go of this 
competition. I need to let go of judging. I need to let go of my fear or whatever the words might be. So they, that gives us something to, to give us feedback, to catch and go, oh, I'm doing that again. Mm -hmm. And then validate, okay, I'm, I've already gone up a few levels. I can keep on doing this. And so journaling is a way. Or walking away from it and just only looking at all the healthy qualities. And we know how just receiving all of those. If they're on, I, sometimes I ask clients and I do it myself. I put on the refrigerator 10 of the healthy qualities. So I'm, it, I'm wired for it. And so I'm getting that reinforced. Hmm. And sometimes that's just the easiest way to do it. I receive and have a list. That's why each of these chapters, I didn't show you, it's not, You'd have to do some work from one of the, but basically the, I just grabbed the two, but it lists, each chapter lists healthy qualities and less healthy. And you can, you know, you just have to do a little bit of digging yourself to I really can see the ones that are important to you from other resources. Um, but just focusing on the healthy ones, letting the others not have face anymore. And to me, that's the most direct way to go off. Mm -hmm. Especially without it, thinking, just feeling it. It needs a huge capacity of being aware of what is going on. No? It just reminds us to be mm. in integrity. But with, like for the one, I'm in integrity and it's just natural. You know, there's no effort. It's there, it's inside of me. I just think most of us, our, our patterns of learning growing up, depending on where we were, a child, what was school like, we sometimes think it has to be a complicated thing. And I just, if we just recognize and see that, it, it's inside of us. I mean, what a, what a, what a gift that is. You look like you're thinking about something, Monia. Do you have a thought? Mm -hmm. yeah i was just opening first of all i'm going to read the book again because it has been sitting there on the shelf and i'm very glad you pointed it out again and then uh it gives also the type the eight is a challenger and i like to challenge i like in 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 uh, german we say that we throw a stick and hölzl werfen so just to scratch someone or or uh and this is what I really like when I meet other people. I always try to challenge them to go a little bit deeper. And uh, yeah, and I use questions for that. And usually the, the reply, the first reply is, oh, that's a good question. So then I know, okay, then I, I continue on this path. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm amazed that we have so much uh, knowledge available to us like it's sitting there on the shelf and I haven't been looking at it for I don't know a couple of years now uh, after you went sick Christine so it was yeah I, I sort of forgot the Enneagram and it makes your life so much richer and fuller to use what you have available and that's uh, the result of today's uh, evening talk. And I'm very grateful for that. That it came back to my awareness. Yeah, I do agree too, because I to, to be reminded of the of the positive qualities, you know, and not keeping being drawn back into these less developed any type four things which I recognize every now and then I think oh yeah that's the four you know but I hardly ever really think about the goal point you know where, where I want to go so that was good that you reminded us I may at least to to think about this that don't how can I say don't stir in the in the bottom and forget where you want to go. Let's say <laughs> this way. <laughs> also, just to make it easier, because most of us don't all have this book, 
But if you go to the Enneagram Institute, Dot com and then put your number in type one type four you can go into a very deep discussion about it and they actually have a shortened version of the three levels mm -hmm. not not that much reversed i mean not that much taken out but let's say it's if this was a hundred percent detail maybe the next level down would be 75 percent so you can, that's right there online at the Enneagram Institute. Um, and of course, you can get this, you can get this and lots of other books, including mine on Amazon, but you don't want to buy mine. It's too expensive. <laughs> Way too expensive. Um, I don't get make one cent from it. It cost me many thousands and thousands of dollars to do those photographs and produce it. But um it, already Amazon was charging so much for it. I wasn't going to add one cent. So I mean, it's probably much, much more a year in Europe. In Europe. Here it's about 300 and I don't know. What am I talking about? It's a lot of wad. In the US it's 35 or something like that, which is crazy. So I had to say, I'm not me. It's not about me. <laughs> I'm I'm going to challenge everybody. I was as we were talking, I was thinking that the integral concepts that are important for the type one to think about is um duality versus non-duality, because the one is always trying to pigeonhole things. If if you're focused always on right and wrong, or good or bad, you know, this judgment thing. Um it's not very non-dual. It forces a lot of duality. So to me, that's a challenge from an integral perspective is to remember to not always be making things dual and think about the non-dual. And the other is, um, you know, the concept of transcend and include. So again, you don't have to think, you don't have to get rid of things. Um, you don't have to decide if something's valuable or not valuable. You can, uh, you can include more and you don't have to be splitting things off. So I'm wondering if anybody else can take their type and think about maybe some integral principle that seems to relate to your type. Anybody have a thought about that? That's a great question and a great way to hold how we see ourselves and others. So I think you've raised a powerful question that change the way we receive ourselves and others. Mm -hmm. We're thinking, we're feeling. I don't have a real answer to it, but it came to me just now. It's very raw still as a thought um, in my type, the ability learning to, to use the ability to see the essence of other people instead of their appearance, let's say. That would be, I think, my task. It's a wonderful, it's a wonderful oh. thing to see. I just looked it up that uh, animal archetypes of the various Enneagrams, it's so funny. And I really, I love it. It's just because I, when I lived in the States, I always also I believed I was a three because uh, it de I depended so much on everybody else around me and the impression I made as a, or as a, a diplomat. And, and the, the three has the beaver. So, uh, uh, and it, it, it was quite funny. I, I don't I, I, the eight I, is, I guess, the lion or the rhinoceros. So it's just really, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, I don't know what the one was, but uh, I, I remember one book was one as uh, the aunt because he's always so busy and so, uh, yeah. So and 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 of course the seven is the monkey, so he just <laughs> <laughs> joyfully. <laughs> Did, did I, I, 
but it, you can look it up easily. It's uh, they have beautiful photographs of the archetypes, and the two is the dog and looking up and, and being so faithful. It's, it's it's fun, and I like this kind of approach to very serious uh, matters as well, just to get a more joyful side. Thank you very much, Christine. It was a lovely idea and great inspiration again. I can't help but jump on the back of what you just said, that you were in the United States. Mm -hmm. You had that curiosity. And then you went to the three. And a lot of people have done assessments of different cultures. And the U.S. culture has been identified as a three. Ah, well, there you go. Huh. What is the South African culture? I don't know. I do. Definitely I don't. not the seven. <laughs> Definitely not the seven, for sure. For sure. The German is six. Mm -hmm. German uh -huh. is six. Italian is four. Ah, mm -hmm. That's why you live in Italy. Okay. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> Isn't that fun? I mean, that's fun. Yeah. yeah, our top Africa is interesting because we've got really rainbow nation. We don't have just one culture. Mm. You know, you can't say like mm. you're American. We we can't say that from us because we have so many different influences and so many different cultures in one place that it might be difficult to actually pinpoint one for South Africa. You might for a specific culture in South Africa maybe pinpoint one, but not as a totality. It would be very difficult. Wonderful, actually, isn't it? Because we don't we don't have patriotism like you'd have in the US because we have so many different flavors of people living here that there's not one one that holds everybody together as the South Africans. We don't have that. Mm, very healthy, huh? Yeah, wish we had a whole bunch more of that here. <laughs> Type one is England. I was wondering, I was wondering, I was thinking that it was. Yeah, with monarchy and a lot of hierarchy going on. Yes, yeah. I lived there and I kept thinking, I don't remember whoever had done the list, but I keep, yes. I guess For any sure. culture that's where it has a lot of properness and there's a good right way and a wrong way to do things and you got to stick with it. Yeah. Isn't it interesting? Yeah, Maybe definitely not. Too. Definitely not South Africa. <laughs> not number one. <laughs> no. Hey guys, I'm going to have to say goodbye. So I'm going to check out for today. I I will yeah. not be here in two weeks. I'll be in Florida. I will think of you. <laughs> Actually, I'll be in Georgia. I'm going to Florida to see my brother and sister and sister in law, and relax a little bit. And then I'm seeing my best friend from high school who now lives in Georgia, and she and her husband retired there, so I'm going to spend some time with them. So I will be thinking of you that Monday, and I will return the following session. So I and wish you all as, as a good day. Enneagram 4, I say I envy you. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good time, and okay, everybody, let's be seeing in two weeks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.